When I give to charity, I wonder, will this money really help people or might it just go to bureaucracy, salaries, middlemen? Well, a new way of fundraising aims to address that worry. A company called Kiva connects Americans who want to help someone in poor countries who want a loan. This farmer in the Philippines asked for $200 to buy fertilizer for her farm. This woman in Togo, Africa asked for a loan to expand her business selling bags of salt. Sounds very nice, but wait a second, who keeps track of the money? How do I know it really goes to those people? And what are the odds that I'll get paid back? It's called a loan. Well, Kiva's founder, Primal Shah, joins us now from San Francisco. So Primal, how, how do I know I won't get scammed if I give through your charity? Well, we at Kiva spend our time making sure that the loans on the website that are posted are legitimate. And we do this through three methods. The first is we vet local field partners around the world to make sure that they're legitimate organizations. They're the ones who are taking photos, posting up the business plans of the, you know, the women and men that you talked about. Uh, uh, a farmer in the Philippines, a woman who wants to buy uh, a cow for a dairy business in Kenya. The way they get up onto the website is a local field partner, and we vet that local field partner. Then we follow up by auditing that field partner to make sure that the data on the website is actually true. And when it's not true, we make that transparent on the website and we shut down that field partner. And the third thing, and this is what's exciting about a loan versus a donation, which is the proof is in the pudding. As you start getting repaid on Kiva, you know that that business has actually earned enough money to pay you back. And, and when you can get repaid, you can withdraw that money back to your bank account or relend it to another entrepreneur around the planet. And looking at these businesses and the distance involved, I would think most of the people don't get paid back. Well, actually, in the last seven years, the repayment rate is 98% on the website. 98% of the loans get paid back. I mean, that's, it's hard to believe. Why? Oftentimes, the poorest people on the planet, the 2.5 billion people who are underserved by banks and who live on less than $2 a day, they don't have collateral and they don't have credit scores like a lot of us here in the United States has. However, what they do have is they know their friends and neighbors in their village and they self-select into groups of say eight. And then all eight of the women, and typically loans go to women on the Kiva website, over 80% of the loans go to women. Those women basically will pick people that they trust in their neighbor, neighborhood. And they basically, if one of the eight women, let's say her cow dies and she can't repay the loan, the other seven women will chip in and cover her loan. And the reason why is all eight of those women their future loans depend on everyone paying back on time. And so that's why you see high repayment rates in microfinance. And it's also a testament to the working poor, which is if given the opportunity to get access to capital, it's their lifeline out of poverty oftentimes, and they take it very seriously. They handle the money with care, and they know that they can get access to future loans if they pay back the current one. And I congratulate you in that you started Kiva not that long ago, in 2005, and yet already the total lent hundreds of millions of dollars, 857,000 lenders, I assume more all the time. Thank you, Primal Shah. Thanks. Now, another site called Kickstarter uses a similar concept to allow people to fund, well, anything. People post projects, a business idea, a film, and donors fund the ones they like. So the idea is this. I'm writing a book. A feature film. Stop motion animations. Sci-fi music video album. Woo! And so do they actually get money from these internet pitches? Well, yes. Philem Makalir got $200,000 after posting on Kickstarter that he wanted to make a documentary in defense of fracking for natural gas. 3,000 people gave you money. Yes, 3,300 people, almost a quarter of a million dollars in two months. And you wanted to make this movie because, because what? Well, there's an untold story about fracking. The story is not being told. Fracking has been smeared as this horrible, polluting thing. In fact, it's wonderful. It's lowered prices for, for everyone and reduced pollution because natural gas emits less than other things. Yes, yes, and, and the people out there know that. But it's never told in the Hollywood documentaries and, and in the mainstream movies about, about fracking. So go to Hollywood and ask for money. <laughs>
<laughs> yes, there's your answer. <laughs> yes, no, listen, why did I do Kickstarter? Desperation. Go to Hollywood and ask for a film to, sh to say that the, the enemy of the rural poor in America is not big business, it's actually big environment. That's, that's what I was going to say. Uh, well, they will just, they'll just laugh at you. Uh, so you, this yeah, is Instead, they make a Matt Damon movie called Promised Land, which says fracking's evil. Yes, uh, and, and it's worse than evil, in fact. So yes, that, that's what's there. Matt Damon is going to tell you that uh, fracking should be banned. And the people of America out in the heartland know that it's, it's good for their communities and, and brings lo lots of good things. Uh, so w I thought their story had to be told, and I asked the people of America uh, to, to fund me, and, and they did. And on Kickstarter, you, you offer different rewards. If I give you a dollar, I get my name in the credits. $20, I get a DVD. $125, I also get a film poster. And this motivated people to give you $200,000. Yeah, well, anyone who gave us a dollar automatically became an executive producer, and I felt it was, <laughs> I, I felt it was very important because this is a film by the people, and that's what Kickstarter is allowing people to do. It's democratizing the documentary movement. Uh, no longer will Hollywood, with its billionaires and millionaires, be able to decide what's a documentary now. People out there with their $1 and their $10 and their $15, and you can still donate to me, actually, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, Kickstarter has closed, but... People out there with their small donations are going to upend Hollywood uh, and upend the means of, of making documentaries, and it's fantastic. Well, good luck with your movie. I hear Mark Cuban has bought it and yes. he's going to put it somewhere. He's going to put it on Access TV on January the 22nd, 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, it's going to go up against Promised Land, which is coming out around the same time. There's going to be another voice out there, which is fantastic. That's what Kickstarter has allowed us to do, have another voice from the billionaire Hollywood uh, urban elite democracy in fundraising thanks